Audi's Q8 e-tron large luxury full electric SUV is offered with a smarter look in the form of this Q8 Sportback e-tron model. Like the standard SUV version, this coupe SUV derivative offers the choice of two battery sizes and two or three motor drive options. The Q8 e-tron is the only model in the class offering two body style alternatives and this, the sleeker variant, makes more sense now it can deliver class competitive driving range. Plus, as before, it's difficult to better in terms of practicality and refinement. Audi's very first EV back in 2019 was the big e-tron SUV, subsequently also made available in a sleeker sportback form in 2020. The segment competition is very different now, but this design still has years to run. So in late 2022, Audi re-engineered, reworked and revitalized it. So much so that it's given this car a new name, the Q8 e-tron, or as in this case, the Q8 Sportback e-tron. The name is confusing given that at the time of this car's launch, Audi already had a completely different model badged Q8, a conventionally petrol powered large coupe SUV, almost completely unrelated to the model that we're looking at here. That combustion model is now rather out of step with the brand's current Q series naming convention, uh, which is supposed to see even numbers designating EV powered crossovers and odd model numbers designating combustion powered ones. What the ordinary combustion Q8 did share with the old e-tron and still does share with this Q8 e-tron is the VW Group MLB chassis it sits on. It's never really a good idea to base an EV on a platform originally designed to work with fossil fuel. Uh, Audi has never done so since and they won't do it again. The original e-tron in both its forms struggled particularly with the weighty downsides of that approach uh, which manifested themselves in clunky curb weight uh, that in turn led to stodgy handling and more seriously to an increasingly feeble looking level of EV driving range. Hence the original model's relatively modest 150,000 sales in its first four years of production at the advanced carbon neutral Brussels plant. When this car's eventual replacement comes, it must be a different thing entirely. But for the time being, with this Q8 branded update, Audi has done what it can to make this luxury EV contender a more competitive proposition, uh, primarily with larger, longer ranging battery options and a minor sharpening up of the handling and the styling. Will it all be enough though to keep this car in segment contention with more modern rivals from BMW, from Mercedes, Volvo, Porsche and Polestar? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test to find that out. Audi's e-tron engineers admired the Tesla models that founded the luxury EV segment, but they wanted their contenders to feel more like cars and less like very sophisticated automotive appliances. But how do you achieve that when you're battling with excess weight and completely different powertrain characteristics from those you get with a conventional engine, while at the same time, uh, you're asking owners to fundamentally alter the way that they use and they drive their cars? Well, to be frank, the original Audi e-tron model and its subsequent Sportback derivative, oh, they both struggle with this. Can this Q8 e-tron update package really change things? Well, we're trying the Sportback version here, identically engineered to the ordinary Q8 e-tron SUV model in an attempt to find out. Mid-term model updates don't usually deliver fundamental changes, even one as far reaching as this. This car certainly doesn't feel very much different when you get behind the wheel here. Uh, Audi says it wants the operating systems in its EVs to feel different yet familiar. So as before, the uh, cabin and the screen architecture is carried over from the brand's combustion powered large luxury models. But at the same time, there are plenty of uh, bespoke and electrified touches. 
like the way that pressing the start button activates a power meter in place of the usual rev counter at the same time as the e-tron delivers a pleasingly potent sounding low hum from its e-sound box and the ready chime that signals you to activate this curious uh, thumb activated silver gear selector. Uh, select D, take in the fact that this Audi doesn't have the kind of conventional auto gearbox creep forward function that you will find with some of its rivals and ready yourself for EV motoring Ingolstadt style. which is all very refined and effortless, aided by a standard air suspension system, which is notable by its absence in quite a few rivals. As part of the Q8 e-tron update, Audi has tweaked this and also made minor changes to the ESC stability setup and the steering rack in order to make this car feel a little more alert, which it never really did in its original form. And that was mostly due to its enormous near 2.6 tonne curb weight. Now that sheer bulk really hobbled the earlier version of this design, uh, making it a quarter of a tonne heavier than a BMW iX and nearly half a tonne heavier than a Jaguar I-Pace uh, with predictable results when it came to EV driving range. Uh, the original entry-level 71 kilowatt hour 50 e-tron version uh, could only go 215 miles between charges. That was not much more than an electric Fiat 500. And even the 281 mile figure of the bigger battery 89 kilowatt hour 55 e-tron model the most early customers actually chose was easily beaten by compact EVs half its size. So job one for Ingolstadt's e-tron engineers with this facelift was to fit bigger, longer aging batteries. And sure enough, that's what we've got. Uh, the base 50 e-tron models battery rises in size to 89 kilowatt hours, uh, delivering up to 292 miles of range. That's better than a Jaguar I-Pace or a BMW iX xDrive 40. And the mid-level 55 e-tron model we're trying here gets a 106 kilowatt hour battery size with up to 344 miles of range. And that's better than a Mercedes EQE SUV 500 and closer to the standard setting BMW iX xDrive 50. Staying with the good news, there's more power for both the mainstream models too, up from 313 PS to 340 for the base 50 e-tron version of this Audi. That now makes 62 miles an hour in six seconds en route to 124 mph. And it's up from 360 PS to 408 PS in this 55 e-tron variant, and that lowers the sprint time to 5.6 seconds. Either way, as before with these two models, uh, your battery of choice powers two electronically linked asynchronous motors, uh, one on each axle. This in turn creates an electrified interpretation of Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. Although in low demand situations, the car will be rear driven thanks to a decoupling system which disconnects the front drive motor when that's not needed. Uh, as part of the Q8 e-tron update for 50 and 55 variants, the Ingolstadt engineers have squeezed in two more windings into the coils of the rear axle motor, and that enables it to use less current without affecting torque output. That's rated at 664 newton meters for both variants. Use all that pulling power on a regular basis though, and of course your potential driving range will fall like a stone. Uh, apparently the development team just about managed to get this car to lap the infamous 20.8 kilometer Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack twice at full tilt before its battery was flat. Ideally though, for doing something like that, you won't want a conventional Q8 Sportback e-tron with two motors. Uh, you'll need a more sophisticated one with three. Now back in 2020, Audi introduced flagship versions of this design, the e-tron S and the e-tron S Sportback models. Uh, they were the world's first electric vehicles to use three drive motors, and that is still unique in class. Uh, to create these top S variants, the larger electric motor that on a conventional e-tron Sportback uh, sat on the uh, rear was moved to the front and that freed up space for twin smaller motors to sit on the back axle and that allowed torque vectoring and fully variable torque distribution between the rear wheels for considerably enhanced cornering ability. 
that innovative formula was left unaltered as part of this update. The only differences lie with a change of badge work and the models in question are now known as either the SQ8 e-tron or the SQ8 Sportback e-tron and the addition of the 55 e-tron models larger 106 kilowatt hour battery. Adding in a third motor to these top Audi Sport engineered variants meant a higher output of course uh, up to 435 PS with 808 Newton meters of torque or with the provided S mode engaged for overtaking 503 PS uh, with a thumping 973 Newton meters of torque. That's enough to simply hurl an SQ8 e-tron at the horizon. 62 miles an hour from rest is recorded at 4.5 seconds, but it feels quicker than that because the pulling power is so instant. It tails off only as you edge close to the 130 miles an hour maximum. Drive more sensibly, an acclaimed range of up to 278 miles is supposed to be possible, uh, up from 236 miles before, thanks to that bigger battery. Actually, even the standard Q8 Sportback e-tron 50 and 55 models corner better than you might expect such a prodigiously heavy SUV to be able to do, and that's thanks to low battery placement on the car's EV modified MLB platform and a consequent low center of gravity. Uh, the electrified twin motor quattro system on those standard models works really well too, uh, seamlessly shunting drive from front to rear in a manner that gives you some real confidence through fast sweeping turns, uh, if not quite as much as you get with a competing Jaguar I-Pace. Uh, the three motor SQ8 e-tron model though really takes things up to another level. Now the difference there is you get real confidence through tighter, twistier turns uh, thanks to the electronic torque vectoring system's ability to individually control the amount of drive that's being fed to each individual rear wheel with pinpoint accuracy. That's based on the grip and load active on either side of the car as you drive through each corner. It's sort of like a mechanical limited slip differential, except that uh, here there's nothing but software linking the two rear motors, and they respond up to 25% quicker. Now, while all this is going on, wheel selective torque vectoring on the front axle uses the discs and pads to gently brake the inside front wheel as you turn, and that further helps to rotate the car into the turn as the rear tires edge towards their limit. The whole setup apparently allows for a very un-EV like lurid oversteer on a circuit, but for fast road use, the traction it provides is genuinely astonishing. When we first tried the rather flat-footed SUV version of the e-tron model back in 2019, we would never have believed that a variant of the same car could be made to handle so engagingly. Unfortunately, there's nothing particularly engaging about driving the more mainstream twin motor 50 and 55 versions of this Q8 e-tron. Uh, the weight issue that we've already mentioned, well, you'll certainly feel that when you're pushing on uh, along twisting secondaries, but rivals from Jaguar and BMW partly overcame battery bulk with more engaging steering, uh, which Audi has tried but failed to provide as part of this update. As before, the variable ratio Q5 derived progressive rack is certainly accurate. If only it gave you the same confidence as the drive system. Uh, what a much improved car this would actually be. Whatever kind of Q8 e-tron you choose, to get the most from each battery charge, you'll need to spend at least some of the time in the uh, more frugal of the six drive modes offered by Audi's uh, now very familiar drive select system. Uh, that's efficiency. There are five further mode settings, comfort and the sportier dynamic being the main ones. Uh, but there is also all road and off road if you're on some bumpier terrain. Uh, there's auto two if you can't make up your mind and you want the system software to make all those decisions for you. Plus there is an individual menu if you want to set up your own parameters. Uh, the various settings change steering and throttle response, but they will only change uh, ride quality if on an ordinary twin motor uh, Q8 Sportback e-tron model you ignore base sport trim and get yourself instead a variant with the variable uh, adaptive sport version of the air suspension setup. Audi says it's engineered the air springs fitted there to avoid the waftiness of similar setups which have been fitted to say a Range Rover or a Mercedes S-Class which is actually a pity because we think a bit of waftiness would really suit the mainstream versions of this Audi rather better. 
as it is, rather more of the tarmac's imperfections are transmitted into the cabin and than you might expect from an air-suspended luxury car at this price. Things do smooth out on the highway though, which combines beautifully for longer trips with another appealing Q8 e-tron attribute, uh, that's refinement. All EVs are quiet of course, but this one is particularly silent, unless of course it's at town speeds emitting its mandatory E sound to alert unwary pedestrians. Uh, more perhaps than any other brand in the EV segment, Audi has worked really hard on refinement, recognising that the lack of an engine din up front merely serves to emphasise any remaining sound issues, uh, things like wind or tyre roar or creaking from the body or suspension. In a Q8 Sportback e-tron, you simply don't get any of that. That's thanks to an unsurpassed standard of body rigidity and exemplary build quality from the Brussels factory. Plus, there's a superbly sleek drag coefficient, now a touch slipperier at 0.24 CD. Now that's pretty good for a large SUV and it can be reduced further to 0.23 CD if you opt the uh, optional virtual exterior mirrors we're trying here. Basically tiny cameras stuck on stalks where the conventional door mirrors would normally be. These project an image onto little 7-inch OLED screens built into the interior door cards, which sounds really clever but actually isn't an easy system to adapt to, so we would really suggest that you try it thoroughly before you tick that particular option box. A prime issue when it comes to peace of mind with an EV of this sort is braking capability, always of particular importance when the car in question is, as this one is, enormously heavy and potentially frantically fast. Uh, you probably already know that electric vehicles rely on the drag of regenerative engine braking to scrub off speed far more than their ordinary friction wheel discs. Uh, with earlier EV designs though, those two systems often remained separate. Now with the original version of this e-tron model, Audi was one of the first brands to combine them uh, and that was via an integrated electro-hydraulic brake control system. So depending on the situation, uh, this setup decides whether to decelerate using the electric motor, uh, the wheel brake or a combination of the two, uh, acting on each axle individually. Now most of the time, um, in the interests of energy harvesting of course, the conventional wheel brake are ignored. Uh, in fact, they only come into play if you put more than 0.3 of a G of weight on the brake pedal. Now that might sound as if not much retardation happens unless you really stamp on the anchors, but you'd probably only think that if you hadn't experienced the full extent of regenerative braking possible in a modern EV these days. It is considerable, particularly if you use these steering wheel paddles here, to select the highest level of regeneration possible. Or you can select an automatic recuperation mode from the central MMI screen if you want the car instead to choose the correct level of regeneration for the type of driving that you're doing. Either way, an electro-hydraulic actuator allows the brakes to build up pressure uh, roughly twice as fast as a conventional system, uh, which in an emergency stop is supposed to shorten your braking distance in this car by up to 20%. What else? Uh, well, earlier we mentioned the all-road and off-road modes uh, that are settings for bumpier terrain. Obviously, this Audi doesn't claim to be a mud plugger, but it's perfectly capable of dealing with quite extreme surfaces like muddy fields, sand dunes and snowy tracks. Uh, the air suspension can, after all, raise the ride height by as much as 72 millimetres. Uh, there's a manual option to do that, so across slidey or broken terrain, your Q8 Sportback e-tron can, if necessary, position itself as much as 248 millimetres off the ground. In addition, the Quattro electric four-wheel drive system claims to be quicker than a conventional mechanical setup at distributing torque between the axles. It always defaults to a rear biased setup, but when necessary, it can forward torque frontwards faster than you can blink, instantly combating wheel slip. In short, even in a blizzard, you'll reach your ski lodge in Val d'Isere without breaking a sweat. But it's rather more important to know that during the next snowy snap in the suburbs, your Q8 e-tron has your back. 
It's not much good as a tow car though. Uh, the two motor Q8 Sportback e-tron, like the equivalent Q8 e-tron SUV, has an unbraked trailer weight limit of just 750 kilos and the SQ8 e-tron models aren't rated for towing at all. Overall, there are lots of reasons why you might like a Q8 Sportback e-tron uh, once you've decided whether you're happy with the operating range that this car offers and whether you can live with the public charging structure that is still woefully underprepared for the kind of technology that cars like this can now offer. Like all its competitors, Audi talks airily about the almost limitless EV mobility provided by uh, ultra-rapid charging stations, but the way things are at present, with those kinds of battery replenishment points uh, rather rarer than unicorns, uh, you're still going to have to very carefully plan lengthier excursions, uh, you're going to have to have a carefully thought out overnight charging regime too, and you're really going to need mastery of this car's regenerative range extending technology and even with all that in place probably is still going to require a second fossil fueled luxury car for longer trips still if you can make the drive range and the flaky public charging infrastructure work for you there's no reason why this q8 sportback e-tron wouldn't work too as with more conventional Audi models, it isn't best in class in every particular area, but unlike its predecessor, it is now there or thereabouts in enough of them to an extent that creates a very complete product indeed. It's surprising just how much you can change the look of a car with a relatively minor facelift. Really, all Audi's done here is to update the old model uh, by reprofiling the bumpers, smartening the grille, and redesigning the wheels, but the effect is a small but satisfying move up market in keeping with the predictable price hike. As before, this sleek uh, uh, Sportback Q8 e-tron body style attempts, in Audi's words, to combine the power, presence and space of an SUV with the elegance of a four-door coupe and the progressive character of an electric car. For us, that's a lot of bases to cover in one single design, but we'll leave the subjective judgment to you. What we've got here is certainly a substantial piece of Ingolstadt real estate, over 4.9 metres long and sitting over 1.6 metres high, although there's plenty of panel work sculpting to disguise the bulk, including this mid-level crease which flows through the door handles and this prominent upper swage line which uh, emphasises the powerful rear haunches. Uh, the key difference over the brand's ordinary Q8 e-tron SUV is obvious from this perspective. It's a coupe-like rear roof line that's cut from the A7 Sportback and it sweeps back 14 millimeters lower than on the SUV version via steeply raked D-pillars uh, into a lift back style tailgate. The lower edge of the third side window rises towards the rear, that's a typical Sportback feature, and between this upward slanting lower crease and the lower side sills is a trim panel which is supposed to draw the eye to where the battery and thus the energy centre of the car can be found. Uh, tech touches include these optional virtual mirrors, L-shaped pods uh, which protrude on slim aerodynamic stalks replacing ordinary door mirrors and the inclusion of charging flaps on both sides of the car uh, between the front wheel arches and they neatly open with the push of a button. Uh, the profile changes made in the evolution to this uh, Q8 badge design are very minor indeed. A few subtle aerodynamic changes have dropped the drag coefficient from 0.26 to 0.24 CD. Uh, there is now model lettering with an Audi logo in the B pillar and there are differently styled wheels, although the sizes are much the same as before with 20 inch rims at the foot of the range and 22 inches at the very top. Now we've got the eye-catching 21 inch five arm aero gloss black Audi Sport alloys here. A bit more effort's been made with this update at the front uh, where the aforementioned reprofiled bumper emphasizes more prominent triangular corner cutouts on each side. Uh, the huge octagonal single frame grille with e-tron branding along its lower frame comes grey trimmed on the lesser models and black finished as here on the more expensive ones. Either way it gets a smarter look and a new self-sealing system which together with electric shutter 
shutters make it more aerodynamic. Plus, it can now be fully illuminated as an option, and it now features the brand's latest two-dimensional four-ring central logo, just below a freshly added light strip between uh, LED headlamps here, which now come as standard with the brand's intelligent adaptive matrix technology. If you want more headlight tech, you'll need the digital matrix lights featured at the very top of the range. Uh, these feature a small chip containing 1 million micromirrors, which are tilted up to 5,000 times a second, not only to adapt themselves more accurately for different driving situations, but also to project dynamic movie-style animations on the wall or on the ground as part of a carpet of light. It's really very special. Uh, whatever headlight tech you've chosen, the lower part of each lamp unit is made up of four horizontal segments, which creates an e-tron-specific signature for the data time running lights. At the rear, as is usual with Audi models, a light strip connects the LED tail lamps to one another, emphasizing the substantial 1937 millimeter body width. Uh, the color of this e-tron branded lower diffuser varies with trim choice and either way stretches the width of the underside with a distinctive design signature intended to draw the eye to the absence of exhaust pipes. Uh, all the underpinnings here are of course shared with the ordinary boxy Q8 e-tron SUV, which means that unlike Audi's smaller or larger electric vehicles, there's no EV specific chassis, but instead a modified version of the conventional MLB platform platform which all the company's larger models use. Okay, enough with the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. Well, not much at all has changed here as part of the Q8 e-tron update and that means that this cabin probably won't feel as futuristic as an arrival BMW iX, Mercedes EQE SUV, or even Audi's own e-tron GT Quattro, but then it wouldn't do because all those cars are clean sheet designs based on bespoke EV platforms. This one, as we've been saying, is rather less EV unique underneath. So perhaps it's not surprising that at first glance, it feels just like any other large Audi to sit in up front, mainly because of the familiar three screen format with upper and lower ones on the center stack here and Audi's usual virtual cockpit display facing you through this now restyled three spoke steering wheel. But once you get uh, comfortable and you start to look around, key differences do become apparent. A wraparound trimming arc envelops the outer perimeter of the e-tron branded dash. Uh, the fascia is designed with a different architecture. It needs to be able to sweep out and incorporate these optional virtual mirror screens. Uh, more on them shortly. More significant differences to conventionally engined Audis can be found in this wide open center console between the seats, which of course on an electric car like this one doesn't have to accommodate a bulky transmission tunnel. So the brand has instead created this multifaceted compartment to fill the space, a storage area which looks like it should be lidded uh, but which isn't and which rests on open sidewalls uh, intended to lend it the feel of a light sleek sculpture. Actually, this aspect of the design is just annoying because items that you stash in here tend to fall out if you corner too enthusiastically. Uh, you might also take issue with this uh, rather unusual gear selector. It's operated by a hand rest which appears to float above the console and it's activated by a one-touch action conducted with either your thumb or your index finger. It feels awkward at first, but it's one of those things that you'll adjust to and you'll possibly get to rather like. You could perhaps make a similar observation about this car's technological party trick. Uh, those are its pricey optional virtual exterior mirrors, which back in 2019, when they were fitted to the original e-tron model, were claimed to be a world first, but were actually first used on the limited run Volkswagen XL1 Eco car back in 2013. Uh, they amount to what is basically a GoPro style camera sticking out on a stalk where the door mirror would normally be. Uh, each camera projects its image back to a little seven inch OLED screen, one on each side of the front of the car. Uh, they're positioned here at the top of the door card just below the window glass. 
Now, Audi says it offers this rather unnecessary setup for reasons of aerodynamics and safety, but frankly, neither of those claims really stands up to much scrutiny. With the virtual stalks fitted, the drag factors improved by an inconsequential 0.01 CD, although that might conceivably add a mile or two of extra driving range. Now, the safety argument for this system is based around the way that these uh, virtual exterior mirrors are clever enough to use navigation data to automatically vary the style of their projected image to give you a clearer rearward view in three driving environments. Uh, highway use, which is motorway view, turning, turn signal view, and parking or curb view. Uh, they can be adjusted and folded just like normal mirrors too. Our perspective on their safety value is a little different. First, when you want to look behind you and you're not using your rear view mirror, it simply isn't natural to look at the top of a door panel. You could perhaps get used to that over time, but more of an issue is that the OLED screens are prone to reflections and sun flare, plus they're fiddly to adjust. You have to drag your finger around the screen. Uh, the whole concept here will certainly get your passengers talking, but whether you'd really want to live with that is another question entirely. In any case, this cabin already has enough screens. The one you'll use most is the virtual cockpit, the instrument binnacle display, uh, a 12.3 inch TFT digital monitor, which shows two virtual dials. There's a speedo on the right and on the left, there's an EV power meter gauge. At the center of that usually shows energy consumption. Uh, the space between these two dials can be configured to show audio info, phone settings and trip data, the latter including selectable options like EV range, drive assist features or the display of speed signs that you've passed. Or the area between the two main dials can allow room for a rather cool full width navigation display, uh, more space for which is allowed if you use this left hand wheel spoke view button to shrink the size of the two main gauges. Uh, there's also a choice of three main layout themes, uh, either classic with green and blue edge dials, uh, there's sport where you'll get white dial edges and e-tron which is a single dial eco style layout. Uh, Vorsprung and SQ8 trimmed models get this further plus layout for the screen that uh, shrinks everything to a single performance orientated center dial uh, which incorporates range, digital speed and gear info surrounded by a power meter gauge while all the uh, customizable information readouts that we've just referred to sit to the left and right of the main dial. All of this works in concert, of course, with the two MMI touch response centre stack monitors that we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, to be frank, we do have some reservations about this layout, uh, mainly because it relies almost entirely on screen touch and voice control. Uh, the lower iDrive style manual rotary controller that you get on a rival BMW iX3 is far more intuitive. Uh, to be fair, this twin screen setup does work a bit better than the similar one that's found on Range Rovers and Jaguars. Uh, firstly, because there isn't really anything very significant that you have to look down to see on the lower screen. And secondly, uh, because all the functions incorporate haptic feedback and that sees the touchscreen surface emit a tactile and acoustic signal when the function's pressed. Now you don't always get that though unless you uh, prod the screen quite firmly. The higher central monitor is 10.1 inches in size and it features tile apps that you can move around with the kind of drag and drop functionality you'll be used to from your smartphone. Uh, they deal with the most important radio, media, telephone and navigation functions. Plus, as you'd expect, uh, there's the usual Audi smartphone interface which is compatible with the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. And of course, uh, you get a full suite of Audi Connect media connectivity features uh, that, amongst other things, uh, deliver online media streaming. Uh, there's a Google points of interest search function. Uh, there's also a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system. Plus, there's news and weather feeds via a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the superfast LTE advanced mobile data network. Uh, configurable 
favorites. Buttons help to tailor the system to user preferences and they allow up to seven drivers to store their own preferred settings in individual user profiles and set up to 400 parameters. And there's a particularly useful car section which gives you all kinds of helpful driving range, charging and efficiency orientated readouts. The lower monitor, which is 8.6 inches in size, is reserved for more comfort orientated features, although its screen can also be used to trace letters uh, that the search system can then use to give you selection options. Of course, you might expect that to be just another thing that would leave these shiny displays here continually coated in grubby, smeary fingerprints. Uh, that is particularly a problem in these post-pandemic days with all that repeated use of hand sanitizer. You might also worry about sunlight reflection. Uh, Audi has tried with partial success to mitigate both of those issues by use of an anti-fingerprint coating and a layer of anti-glare film, but to some extent, uh, both of those problems do still remain. What we do like about this setup is the way that the upper screen can be turned off uh, to prevent nighttime distraction and its main functions uh, can be summarized on the top part of the lower display. Enough on screens. Uh, we continue to think that this layered fascia isn't quite as successful in mixing real buttons and touchscreen functions as is the case with the brand's smaller A3, but the leather stitched seats are superbly comfortable and position you fairly loftily. You certainly sit higher than you would in a rival Jaguar I-Pace. Uh, that's one of the reasons why forward vision here is excellent. As usual on models purporting to be coupe-like, your over the shoulder view isn't quite so great. Uh, the rear pillars are really quite thick and that's exacerbated actually by the low roof and the small rear window. So it's just as well that parking sensors and the rear view camera are standard fit. What else? Um, well, fit and finish from the Brussels factory is pretty much faultless. And of course, as usual with Audi, that bulletproof quality is backed up by lovely soft touch plastics fashionable strip lighting, chrome highlights and lashings of leather. For us, it's a class above what you get in that rival Jaguar and certainly good enough to compete with pricier rivals like the Mercedes EQE SUV and the Tesla Model X. A few words on storage. The open-sided box between the seats that we mentioned earlier incorporates a cup holder area with pop-out stays. Uh, that's beneath a louvered cover and a whole stack of media stuff an unusual side-mounted wireless charging mat, plus a 12-volt socket and twin USB-C points. Uh, behind all this is an armrest which covers a deep flock-lined box. And there's a big LED-lit glove box incorporating a pen clip and coin holders. Audi's forgotten to build in an overhead sunglasses compartment and you will only find a ticket clip on the driver's side sun visor, but you do get deceptively large door bins and a surprisingly big storage compartment down here by the driver's right knee. Okay, let's take a seat in the rear. Now we touched briefly on this Q8 Sportback e-tron model's lengthy dimensions earlier. It's 52 millimeters longer than a rival Mercedes EQE SUV and 219 millimeters longer than a Jaguar I-Pace. In fact, amongst uh, direct rivals in the segment, only the BMW iX is lengthier by 38 millimeters. All that bodes well for rear space, although you might worry that backseat headroom might be compromised by this swept back roof line. But Let's take a look. This Sportback body style's 14mm reduction in ceiling height might bother you if you're a six-footer. Uh, your head will be brushing the immaculately crafted roof liner, but otherwise it feels pretty spacious back here. Uh, inevitably, you will be much less comfortable if there are three of you uh, and you're stuck back here in the middle. Uh, shoulder room with a trio of adults wouldn't actually be uh, too bad, but uh, this middle seat, well, it's narrow and it's got a stiff backrest. At least there's no uh, prominent central transmission tunnel to impede you though. Uh, just above it are twin vents, a 12 volt port, and on plusher models, twin USB-C ports too. Seems a bit mean on a car of this price, not to include rear climate controls though. As you can see, we have got 
that four zone climate control system fitted here. If it hasn't been though, this screen space will instead be occupied by a rather useless uh, central compartment. Should there be just a couple of you, you'll be able to retract this armrest, which has a shallow lidded storage compartment, but also rather meanly only includes cup holders if you pay Audi extra for its optional storage and luggage pack. Uh, these pop out, but are difficult to click back in. That's not very Vorsprung durch Technik, is it? Uh, there are overhead reading lights, there are coat hooks in the grab handles, there are decently sized door bins, and there are seat back net pockets. Plus, each B pillar has a vent and a coat hook, and these rear quarter light windows let in some much needed light. Right, let's take a look at the cargo spaces that this Q8 Sportback e tron can offer. There are two of them. We'll start with the one up front. Now, Audi's designers haven't wasted the extra room created by the lack of an engine up front, so Q8 Sportback e tron owners get a fruit or a frunk or whatever else you want to call it beneath the bonnet here. Now you could complain rightly that it's not actually very big, uh, but we would point out that this 60 litre space is more than double the size of the front compartment that you get in the I-Pace. And that is quite significant because it makes it easily big enough for the storage of the two charging leads and saves them from cluttering up the boot. The tailgate is power operated, of course, and can as here be specified to work with foot activation. Uh, once it's completed its arthritic progress upwards, a decently sized uh, 528 litre boot is revealed. The heavily sloped rear screen means that's 39 litres less than the ordinary boxier Q8 e-tron SUV body shape can offer, and dog headroom will be rather restricted if you happen to need that. What's on offer here to parcel shelf level is actually quite class competitive with rivals that don't claim to be in any way coupe like. Eight litres better than the Mercedes EQE SUV, 23 litres better than the Jaguar I-Pace and 28 litres better than the BMW iX. Not so good is the fact that you have to negotiate quite a high loading lip in order to reach that cargo area and that's topped by this impractical silver panel which will quickly attract scratches and scrapes. More positively, you get some useful underfloor storage space, although of course much of that will be used up if you're wise enough to specify the optional collapsible spare wheel which sits in that deep well. That optional storage and luggage pack we mentioned earlier on gives you useful luggage compartment side nets plus a net you can attach to these four substantial looking chromed tie down points to stop small items from rolling around on the boot floor. If you need more room and you need to fold the rear bench, you'll be pleased to find that it retracts in a convenient 40-20-40 split, so longer items like skis can be pushed forward between two rear seated folk. Uh, fold everything down and although the cargo space created isn't quite flat, there's no step up to the rearward part and you get 1,567 litres of total space. That's 70 litres less than an ordinary Q8 e-tron SUV. Audi expects a significant number of Q8 e tron models sold to be of the sportback kind. This body style requires a £2,500 premium over the standard body shape and it's likely to account for 34% of sales. At the time of this test in summer 2023, that meant Q8 Sportback e-tron prices started from around £70,000. That's for the base 89 kilowatt hour version. Add another 10,000 to that if you want the 106 kilowatt hour longer range 55 e-tron variant we have here. With both battery sizes and both body shapes, at the time of filming, there was a choice of four trim levels. Sport, 20% of sales. S-Line, 40%. Black Edition, 30% and Vorsprung, 5% of sales. If nothing but the fastest and most powerful style of Q8 e-tron will do, then you'll be directed to the SQ8 e-tron model, which in sportback form required just over £99,000 from you at the time of this test. That's in base black edition form, mind you. It'd be around £116,000 in plusher Vorsprung guys. 
Let's start with some Audi perspective on those figures. The brand's ordinary and completely unrelated combustion-powered Q8 large sports SUV is in base 55 TFSI form, priced almost identically to a Q8 Sportback e-tron and has the same 340 PS output. If you want a lesser dose of EV-ness, the Q8 is also available in TFSI e plug-in hybrid form, a variant temporarily taken off sale as we filmed, but about to be reintroduced. For reference, a Q8 PHEV costs about the same as this Q8 Sportback 55 e-tron and has an EV range of 34 miles. If you're limited to a full EV, the other Audi offering in the large segment is the company's Gran Turismo style e-tron GT Quattro, which is a saloon. This again is a completely different proposition. It's based around a much more advanced 800 volt electrical architecture uh, that's been developed with Porsche and it uses a different 93.4 kilowatt hour battery. The e-tron GT Quattro puts out 476 PS and costs around £86,000 at the time of this test, which makes it a more natural alternative to the larger battery Q8 Sportback e-tron 55, although the e-tron GT Quattro's EV range is 39 miles lower at 305 miles. Finding direct rivals from other brands is a lot harder than you might think. For a start, no other competitor in this class offers a coupe SUV body shape like this Sportback body style. So the most obvious competitors to the Q8 e-tron are arguably more directly pitched against this Audi in its more standard boxier SUV body style. If you are prepared to ignore that though, and you're looking at the base 50 e-tron 89 kilowatt hour battery model, then there are two rivals that share the same 70,000 pound price tag, Jaguar's I-Pace, which has a bit more power than the Q8 at 50 e-tron, and the base X-Drive 40 version of BMW's iX, which has a bit less. Neither of those two cars can quite match the Q8 50 e-tron's EV driving range though. You might wonder about Mercedes alternatives in the segment, uh, the EQC for example, which gives you a slug more power than is offered by a Q850 e-tron, but also delivers significantly less range and costs about £5,000 more. As we filmed, we were hearing that EQC production would soon end. Uh, that would leave the Mercedes alternative this Audi uh, being the rather more recently launched EQE SUV, but in base EQE 350 form, that model costs around £90,000, so around £20,000 more than a 50 e-tron and gives you a bit less power, although it will take you about 15% further on every battery charge. A much better value choice comes from Korean luxury brand Genesis, that's the G70 Electrified, which is a slightly smaller SUV but costs around £65,000 as we filmed, so it'll save you around £5,000 on a Q850 e-tron, and it's more powerful, better equipped and charges better. Priced and sized at about the same slightly smaller level, uh, around £64,000 as we filmed, is BMW's iX3, but that has significantly less power and it can't be had with four-wheel drive. So far we've concentrated on comparisons with the base 50 e-tron variant, but quite a few Q8 e-tron customers will want to limit themselves to the longer ranging 55 e-tron mid-level version of this Audi, uh, the 106 kilowatt hour battery model we're trying here. This is priced as we filmed from around £80,000. If that's your focus, then the same sort of money would get you a Polestar 3 long range. Uh, that gives you longer driving range and more power. Uh, now that would be a tempting alternative were it not for the fact uh, that that has a considerably smaller boot uh, than even the Sportback version of this Audi. Uh, all the other most obvious alternatives to a 55 e-tron cost considerably more. As we filmed, a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo cost a minimum of around £88,000. Uh, the base version of Volvo's EX90 needed around £96,000. The bigger battery version of BMW's iX, 
the xDrive 50 costs from around £103,000. A Tesla Model X in base dual motor form, uh, only now available in left-hand drive, costs from around £105,000. And the Mercedes EQE SUV 500, that was pitched right up from around £109,000. That only leaves the SQ8 e-tron flagship version of this Audi to consider. Uh, the near £100,000 price tag for that model is about the same as Volvo wants for the uprated performance version of the EX90, but it's about £15,000 more than the performance pack version of the Polestar 3 model. Uh, the only other class alternatives that you could consider offer a lot more power, but they cost a huge amount of extra money. Uh, as we filmed, the BMW iX M60 cost around £123,000, a Tesla model Lex Plaid cost around 130,000 and a Mercedes AMG EQE SUV 53 Formatic Plus that costs from around 134,000 pounds. If having considered all the alternatives you conclude it is some sort of Q8 Sportback e-tron you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been on spec. So let's take a look at that right now. And let's start with base sport spec. Now unlike Mercedes and Jaguar, Audi includes air suspension as standard across the range for this EV, uh, given the weight of this kind of car and the effect that that can have on ride quality, it's a feature that we see as pretty much essential. In this case, it's a fully adaptive system which works in conjunction with the seven settings of the Audi Drive Select driving mode setup. Uh, it automatically regulates ride height and damping as necessary, and it also includes a self-leveling suspension and manual lift function. Uh, as you'd expect, in this class there is also an electric four-wheel drive system that is an electrified version of Audi's Quattro setup and progressive steering, which reduces the need uh, for effort in low-speed manoeuvring but uh, alters its ratio at higher speeds so that it feels more direct through the corners. Uh, as usual with an EV, you get a couple of charging cables, you get a Mode 2 lead for plugging into a conventional socket and a Mode 3 cable for use with wall boxes or AC public charging points. What's unusual here though is that Audi provides a charging flap on both sides of the front of the car so you're not constantly trying to stretch the lead that you need to a single point. Other standard Q8 Sportback e-tron features include an impressive range of camera-driven safety features. Uh, we're going to get onto those though in a few minutes. And also most of the luxury niceties you'd expect on a car of this price. Uh, these include piercing matrix LED headlamps, a power-operated tailgate, an acoustic glazed windscreen, uh, an anti-theft alarm, a rear spoiler and a high gloss pack which finishes the roof frame and the window trims in aluminium. Uh, inside you'll find twin leather, full leather upholstery, uh, the seats at the front featuring heating, four-way electric lumbar support, powered adjustment and also a memory function. Uh, there is also an LED interior lighting pack, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a rear view camera, there's cruise control with a speed limiter, uh, there's a removable rear net partition for the boot and deluxe two-zone electronic climate control that can be programmed to either heat or cool the car before you get into it. Uh, replacing the conventional gauges in the instrument binnacle is the 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit screen. That's a high resolution uh, customizable LCD monitor with virtual dials and 3D graphics. Talking of digital displays, infotainment's been taken care of by Audi's MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package uh, via a two-screen centre dash layout uh, that the Q8 e-tron shares with its A6, A7 and A8 showroom stablemates. There's an upper 10.1-inch monitor primarily for Audi's MMI Navigation package and the 10-speaker 180-watt DAB sound setup with a subwoofer and a six-channel amplifier. And a lower 8.6-inch display used mainly for the car's two-zone electronic climate control functions. Via the upper screen, you can use the standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring setups. 
plus there's voice activation, that's activated by the phrase, hey Audi, and the usual Bluetooth, Audi music interface, and various other informational features showing you range and battery information. Uh, you also get the useful Audi phone box package. Now that can wirelessly charge your telephone and it'll improve its reception too with LTE support. As an included part of the whole MMI system, there's a three-year subscription to the Audi Connect Media Connectivity Package, and that works via an embedded SIM card, which is permanently installed in the car and operates on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you do a bit of intercontinental motoring. Uh, the setup can work with Amazon Alexa integration, and that means that it can do uh, all sorts of things like manage shopping lists and operate smart home control. Plus, the Audi Connect system comes with an LTE data transmission module uh, that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates in your Q8 e-tron a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the super-fast LTE Advanced Mobile Data Network. Uh, through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and your Twitter pages, and it's also possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. Uh, the included online media streaming package, uh, that will give you access to millions of music tracks. And there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system. Uh, now this uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. There is too the Audi Music Interface, which offers simple pairing with your mobile devices using twin USB ports with charge and data functions. Also built into Audi Connect is the car to x services system, which the brand developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. Uh, that allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions, or to somehow know what's around the next corner. It's not magic, of course. The setup is instead driven by a mobile phone-supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system. And that'll see your Q8 e-tron sending data and driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. Uh, what else? Well, you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you, even when you're not with your Q8 e-tron, and that's thanks to the improved My Audi app. Uh, this transmits points of interest to the navigation system, it streams music, and it can transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. Uh, the app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So, uh, say if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and you have to park a few streets away from the venue, then navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete that journey on foot. Finally, as uh, usual with vehicle apps of that sort, uh, you can also use it to get a vehicle status report. Uh, you can use it to lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. And of course, as you would now expect with a luxury EV, you can also use it to program your chosen charging regime. So that's covered what you get with base sports spec, which features 20 inch graphite gray alloy wheels and graphite gray interior inlays. Upgrade yourself to mid range S line spec and the wheels supplied are of a larger 21 inch size and you get much sportier look courtesy of bespoke bumpers, an S line rear diffuser, rear privacy glass and larger 21 inch five arm turbine wheels. S line spec also gives you firmer adaptive sport air suspension and inside it delivers a branded perforated leather steering wheel, a black cloth headliner, black glass operating buttons, dark matte brushed aluminium trim, stainless steel pedals, a front comfort armrest and extra leather for the dash, the door armrest and the centre console. If you like the S-Line spec, but you want the kind of meaner, more distinctive look we have here, Audi serves up Black Edition spec, which gives you a black finish for the roof rails, the door mirrors, the front grille, the window surrounds, uh, the bumper trim strips, and the 21-inch five-arm aero Audi Sport alloy wheels. Inside, there's mesh anthracite inlays and a flat-bottomed leather multifunction sports steering wheel with gear shift paddles. Plus you get the Audi Beam feature, which projects the e-tron brand name onto the ground when you open the front door at night. 
And finally, if you're really not constrained by budget, there's top Vor sprung trim. This is recognizable by a huge 22 inch, six segment spoke diamond cut Audi Sport alloy wheels. Plus there's front grille illumination, powered door latching, advanced key keyless entry, adaptive wipers, and a panoramic glass roof. Vor sprung trim also gets you Audi's uber clever digital matrix lights which tailor their beam to different types of driving and include advanced uh, light animations that can be customized. Inside there are super sport seats with diamond stitching, a 16 speaker, 705 watt Bang & Olufsen premium sound system, a head up display, a heated steering wheel and sun blinds for the rear and side windows and a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack along with powered steering column adjustment, an enhanced plus version of the Audi virtual cockpit instrument screen and an extended leather pack which covers the dashboard. Uh, rear seat folk are looked after with four zone deluxe automatic climate control and heat for the super sport seats. Uh, there are opulent inlays too in carbon. Uh, there's a park assist plus system to steer you into spaces and a 360 degree surround view camera. That only leaves the SQ8 Sportback e-tron, which as you might expect, gets a few extra items. Uh, the base version, as mentioned earlier, is black edition, and we've just covered the features that you get with that. To that tally, the SQ8 adds a different five Y-spoke design for the 21-inch wheels and S-specific styling for the bumpers, uh, the wheel arches, and the side sills. Inside, there's front super sport seats, a head-up display, the plus version of the Audi virtual cockpit. Uh, there's the Bang & Olufsen premium sound system, Audi beam puddle lights, a 360-degree camera, and four-zone climate control, along with the Park Assist Plus auto parking system and a red stop-start button. To this tally, the SQ8 e-tron in top of all sprung trim adds all the ritziest Vore sprung spec features we mentioned earlier on. Uh, you'll want for almost nothing there. On to options, as on any EV, before you start spending any additional cash, budget first for the installation of a charging wall box in your garage, if you haven't already got one. Uh, Audi has a compact e-tron charging system, which consists of a control unit and a Type 2 Mode 2 cable, and that can be fitted by the brand's installation partner, Podpoint. Uh, spend £150 more, and you can specify a neat wall mounting bracket for that to sit on. If you want faster battery replenishment, then put £1,750 aside for the optional and more powerful 22 kilowatt onboard AC charger. Otherwise, probably the most notable extra you could consider are the futuristic virtual door mirrors your Audi Center will be very keen to tell you about. Uh, we've been trying them here. Now these replace conventional door mirrors and they project images onto little OLED screens mounted on each front door. They certainly look sophisticated, but not everyone likes the way that they work in practice, looking down to a door mounted screen uh, rather than to an exterior door mirror does take a bit of getting used to. So try before you buy is our advice, especially since for this one extra, Audi charges a cool 1,750 pounds. If you can't stretch right up to pricey Vorsprung trim, then optional packs allow you to add many of the features that you would get with that spec level to lesser Q8 e-tron variants. Around £3,000 more gets you the technology pack, and that'll give you the B&O premium sound system, the Park Assist Plus auto parking system, the 360 degree surround view camera setup, uh, the head up display, and the multicolored extended LED interior lighting system, giving you six color profiles, each with 30 different shades. Extend your spend to £5,000 more, and the Technology Pack Pro will kit a lower order Q8 Sportback e-tron, almost exactly like a Vorsprung model, giving you all the features we just mentioned, plus that panoramic glass roof, front grille illumination, advanced key keyless entry, and heated rear seats with USB-C ports. We should mention that the Park Assist Plus auto parking system can be specified separately. And if you want to go further, Audi offers its effortlessly cool remote park assist feature, which allows you to stand outside your Q8 Sportback e-tron and park it by pressing buttons on the My Audi app on your smartphone. 
What else? Well, you'll want to get the exterior aesthetics right, unless you want your Q8 Sportback e-tron in the only standard color, solid magnet gray. You'll need to be paying your Audi Center for one of the optional metallic shades. Uh, we've got Pearl Effect Daytona gray here. Uh, there is also a range of even pricier exclusive shades. Inside on the mainstream models, you can add inlays in either fine grain ash or natural volcanic gray. On to practicalities. Now, if you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road fiddling with a tire repair kit, the next time you have a puncture, you'll be wise to budget extra for the optional collapsible spare wheel. Now, this comes with a car jack. Not all EVs allow you to fit a tow bar. This one does though, and it includes trailer stabilization with it, and an option to fit a bike rack too. Bikes can also be carried, of course, on the roof if you fit the optional roof crossbars. Um, they can also take a roof box and carriers for skis, snowboards and kayaks. And for the inside, well, you'll want the storage and luggage pack. That includes a series of additions that really ought to be standard, actually. Uh, two cup holders in the rear central armrest, storage space lining in the spare wheel well, uh, side nets in the luggage compartment and a luggage net for the boot. That cargo area, we would also recommend that you consider either a protective shell or a protective tray to keep it clean, and maybe also the foldable storage box. You can also get a storage bag for the charging cables. Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. And of course, there's a whole armory of electronic camera-driven features. Uh, as you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Ingolstadt calls its setup Audi Presense Front and Basic. And like other similar packages, this one scans the road ahead, looking for potential accident hazards as you drive. And it will automatically brake the car to try to avoid them if you don't respond to the warnings. Uh, the basic element of this system refers to the way that it will also instantly act to give you the maximum chance of survival if an unavoidable accident is detected, uh, tightening the seat belts, closing the windows, and even shutting the panoramic roof if one's been fitted. As you might expect for the money that's being asked here, uh, there is also a lane departure warning setup. Now, this works between 37 and 124 miles an hour. It issues a warning if you drift out of your lane on the highway and it applies subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you really ought to be. Uh, there is also distance warning. Uh, this alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. High beam assist, uh, now this automatically dips your headlights for you at night. And rest recommendation, uh, now that alerts you if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. Earlier, we referenced the fact that top Vorsprung trim gives you some extra camera safety features, and uh, namely those in what Audi calls its City Assist Pack. That's uh, an £1,125 option on lesser variants. This includes a package of useful drive assist elements. There's a lane change assistant uh, that allows you to switch lanes with a flick of the indicator stalk. Side Assist works as a blind spot monitor, and it warns you on the move if you're dangerously just about to pull out to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Uh, cross traffic assist front warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions and can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes and that will prevent an accident. Cross traffic assist rear uh, warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Uh, Presense rear works on the move and warns you via a flashing light if you're just about to be hit from behind so that you can try to take some avoiding action. And exit warning, uh, well that will warn the driver of potential dangers of traffic approaching from the rear when a door's opened. Whatever Q8 Sportback e-tron variant you select, we ought to make the point that this car is fundamentally very safe. A strong enclosing frame of sophisticated aluminium crash structures implemented to protect this Q8 e-tron's high voltage battery and making this car extremely rigid and crash resistant. Plus there are Isofix charge seat mountings, uh, there's a tyre pressure warning light and all the usual front side and curtain airbags too with rear side bags available as an option. Should the worst happen and you do have a crash which activates the airbags, then a standard Audi Connect safety and service feature will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. 
If you want to go further, your Audi Centre will suggest that you consider the optional Tour Pack, which costs just under £2,000 extra on every Q8 e-tron model, uh, bar the Vorsprung trimmed variants where it's standard. Uh, the Tour Pack is also based around an advanced package of camera-driven features, arguably the cleverest being Adaptive Cruise Assist. Uh, this uses a radar sensor, a laser scanner, a front camera and ultrasonic sensors all networked together to permanently monitor your Q8 e-tron's surroundings. Uh, drawing on feedback from these systems, uh, plus local speed restrictions and navigation data, Adaptive Cruise Assist works with an integrated predictive efficiency assistant to proactively control acceleration, braking, lane positioning, and distance to the vehicle in front, all at any speed and with functionality which is equally effective whether you're stuck in traffic or whether you're completely alone on the road. It's very clever and it's also including the active lane assist system we just mentioned. As for the other torque pack features, well, there's turn assist, which detects approaching vehicles at junctions when the turn indicators are activated and won't let you move off dangerously in front of approaching traffic. Uh, plus there's swerve assist. Uh, this supports the driver's actions during an avoidance maneuver. It adds in additional steering torque and it reduces the likelihood of a collision or of swerving off the road. Uh, finally, as part of this pack too, there's also an emergency assist element added to the uh, standard lane departure warning system. Now that is able to autonomously bring the car to a safe controlled stop if you uh, don't respond to repeated warnings about drifting out of your lane, as might be the case if, for example, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. It all means that in driving a Q8 Sportback e-tron, there can potentially be a lot of safety systems to oversee. If you've ticked a few options boxes, there can be up to 40 driver assistance systems with up to five radar sensors, five cameras, and 12 ultrasonic sensors providing environmental information, which is then analyzed by a central driver assistance control unit. So how on earth can you monitor all the different features in everyday driving and uh, more importantly, decide which ones you want to activate at any given time? Well, Audi has tried to simplify that process here by providing a driver assist button at the bottom of the center stack. That's there to allow the selection of the kind of electronic security blanket that you want. Basic includes uh, only the most important items. Maximum gives you absolutely everything and individual will allow you to pick and choose the kind of features that you want activated. To be honest, uh, we don't really understand why you'd ever want to turn any of the available safety features off, but when all of them are activated here, it's certainly very reassuring. Sticking a larger battery into this car seems like a fairly heavy-handed and weightier way of getting it to go further between charges. But in the absence of being able to uh, fundamentally change anything in the electrical architecture or the platform engineering of this model, Audi really did have little choice. And the midterm update that uh, has enabled this change couldn't come soon enough. Uh, given that in its original form, uh, the range of the base 50 e-tron version of the early e-tron was being regularly outrun by EV super minis. Choosing this slightly slipperier sportback body shape gave you a fraction more EV mileage between 9 and 11 miles over the standard SUV body style, uh, depending on the version that you choose. Uh, as usual with stats in this section, we'll quote Q8 Sportback e-tron mileage figures based on the smallest wheel size, uh, in this case 20 inches. Obviously, uh, bigger rims will penalize you a little. If you want to uh, compensate with that, then you could consider opting for the arguably rather silly virtual mirrors that we have on this test car. Uh, they would probably add a few extra miles of range. Even in sportback form with virtual mirrors though, the base 50 e-tron model can't get anywhere near class leadership with the distance its 89 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery can take you between charges. The 292 best possible figure that we gave you in our driving section lags some way behind the more recently designed Mercedes EQE SUV 350 rated at 334 miles. 
But as we filmed in summer 2023, this base Q8 Sportback 50 e-trons mileage figure did look a whole lot more competitive in segment with a Jaguar I-Pace rated at a best of 286 miles, a Genesis GB70 Electrified rated at 283 miles and a BMW iX xDrive 40 at just 262 miles. For reference, uh, the completely different 85 kilowatt hour battery of Audi's other large luxury EV, the e-tron GT Quattro, that'll take you 305 miles between charges. Stretch to this Q8 Sportback 55 e-tron model with its 106 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery and the range figure rises to a best of 344 miles. That's not quite so noteworthy by current segment standards. Uh, even with a smaller battery, the Mercedes EQE SUV 500 gets within 20 miles of it, and BMW's iX xDrive 50 manages to make a 105.2 kilowatt hour battery pack take you up to 382 miles between charges. Think around 365 to 370 miles for the even bigger 111 kilowatt hour battery used in the Volvo EX90 and the Polestar 3. All those rivals uh, cost considerably more than a Q8 Sportback 55 e-tron though, and that could be crucial. That only leaves the top SQ8 Sportback e-tron, which as we told you in our driving section, uses the same 106 kilowatt hour battery as this 55 model, but has a tri-motor system adding 140 kilos more weight, uh, hence the fall in quoted range to between 271 and 278 miles. It's not too far off the uh, 305 mile range figure of the Mercedes AMG EQE SUV 53, but it's some way off the prevailing class standard. Uh, the 348 mile figure is quoted for both the Tesla Model X and the Polestar 3 performance pack, a Volvo EX90 performance and a BMW iX M60. They're both up at around 360 miles. All of the rivals I just mentioned are miles more expensive though than the flagship sporting version of this Audi and that keeps the SQ8 e-tron in the frame as an all-round cost proposition uh, once you take everything into account of course. Enough on EV mileage, uh, these days charging speeds are becoming just as important as the distance that you can go between battery top-ups. Now for really quick charging speeds, uh, you'll need to switch from a conventional 400 volt electrical platform to one with 800 volts. Uh, Audi has already done that with its e-tron GT Quattro, a model which, like its uh, Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo development cousin, can consequently charge at up to 270 kilowatts. The 800 volt platform Genesis GB70 electrified model we mentioned earlier, that can charge it up to 350 kilowatts and together those three cars can make the best use of the new breed of ultra rapid public DC chargers that will be springing up around European highways over the next few years. Uh, because this Q8 e-tron is limited to older tech 400 volt architecture, also still used by BMW and Mercedes uh, by its combustion based MLB chassis, the engineers behind it couldn't even think about super high charging speeds. So all Audi has been able to do is tinker around a bit with the existing ones. With the base 50 e-tron model, the previous feeble 120 kilowatt figure has been raised to 150 kilowatts. That means the car will charge from 10 to 80 percent at a rapid charger in 28 minutes, so about 76 miles every 10 minutes. Uh, think in terms of around two and a half miles for every kilowatt of energy. If your 50 e-tron model is hooked up to an 11 kilowatt garage wall box, then you'll be looking at a charging time of nine hours and 15 minutes. The larger 106 kilowatt hour battery of this 55 e-tron and the SQ8 e-tron, uh, they charge it up to 170 kilowatts and they will charge from 10 to 80% at a rapid charger in 31 minutes or 11 hours and 30 minutes using a garage wall box. Now, if you stayed awake through all those stats, it means that charging speeds are important to you in considering this Audi. For home use like that, with its partner Podpoint, Audi offers a charging system connect garage wall box, which has smart charging functions. Uh, for example, preferred charging at off-peak times, plus it can work with self-generated solar power uh, that's provided your house is equipped with a photovoltaic system. 
Uh, using this, uh, the car can be set to charge preferentially using sunlight sourced electricity, and it can even be set to charge in line with forecast phases of sunshine. Whatever type of battery replenishment you do, as with most big EVs, the claims here of full overnight charging are only just about justified. And unless you stump up for that extra cost 22 kilowatt onboard charger, uh, won't add up at all if you happen to have a late night and an early start. For when you're out and about, the brand has its own charging network, uh, the e-tron charging service, which across Europe uh, provides access to over 120,000 charging points in uh, 21 countries. This provides subscribers with one RFID payment card, which is accepted at a vast number of charge points operated by 18 suppliers right across Europe, and it offers two fixed price charging tariffs. Audi has also partnered with Shell, Ford, uh, the BMW Group and other VW brands to create Ionity. Uh, that's a joint venture aimed at establishing a European high-powered charging network. At the time of this test, there were around 4,000 Ionity quick charging stations along the main traffic arteries in Europe, uh, with the number growing quickly to a target of 7,000 by 2025. In the UK, Audi drivers have access to the ECS, that's the e-tron charging service, which has around 12,000 affiliated British charging points, all of which should be discoverable via the car's navigation system, uh, which usefully recommends charges along any preset route. You can pay for each connected up session with a single membership card, and that entitles you to fixed tariff use. Websites like ZapMap are good for helping you find your nearest charging station, or you can use the MMI infotainment system's integrated e-tron route planner to organize your journey between charge stations. Uh, bear in mind that the cost of charging publicly will be a little higher than your pay at home, of course. Uh, the brand's My Audi app allows you to manage all your charging processes remotely. Uh, these include checking the battery and range status, uh, starting the charge process, programming timers and displaying drive statistics. You can also use the app for preheating or pre-cooling the car prior to departure so you don't uh, have to use battery power to do that once you're underway. Obviously it's very unlikely that a typical Q8 e-tron owner will be running this model as an only car and we're perfectly aware that the average person's daily round trip commute is about a, well it's about a tenth of the operating range of this Audi. Oh yes, range, well we're back to that. Audi quotes energy consumption figures of between 2.8 to 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour for the 50 e-tron and 2.7 to 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour for this 55 e-tron variant. You can monitor actual energy usage in the center of the instrument binnacle's left-hand power meter and on this test, with not particularly hard use, uh, this 55 Sportback e-tron has actually been averaging uh, 2.5 to 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is why the EV range figure we've been getting with this car has been well shy of 300 miles. We reckon that to better that kind of figure, you'd have to be driving the car in the kind of fashion that would never really allow you to enjoy it. Uh, base your journeys in a 55 e-tron at around a 170 to 190 mile operating range, and we think you'll be a lot more realistic. Maybe a bit less than that in really cold weather. Uh, for the smaller battery, 50 e-tron variant, we think you'll be looking at more like 250 to 260 miles as an achievable real world regular figure. When it comes to maximizing driving range, like most EVs, this car pitches in to help quite a lot. There's an efficiency drive select driving mode that you can activate, and in the drive select individual setting, uh, you can keep the drive system in its most efficient setting, uh, even if you want to alter the parameters of some other elements, like the, uh, well, the suspension, for example, and the steering to better suit your mood. If the optional tour pack has been fitted, uh, then your car will come with a predictive efficiency assistant. Uh, now that proactively controls acceleration, braking, lane positioning, and distance to the vehicle in front for maximum range frugality. 
What else? Well, you'll need to keep an eye on the power meter virtual dial we mentioned in the left of the instrument cluster uh, if you're going to drive with maximum efficiency. And in the center screen's car section, uh, there's also a charging menu, and that will give you a battery level readout, uh, which is based around either everyday use or long distances. Uh, you can change your targeted range mileage by tapping on the colored bar, and the car will then try to work with it uh, where possible by reducing power output and by uh, reducing maximum speed at the same time as dialing back the energy consumption of some convenience features. Uh, I'm talking here about the climate control system. If you really are getting low on battery energy and there's no charging point in sight, then going to the charging menu's range monitor reveals a selectable range mode which limits speed and virtually turns off the climate control system to help you to limp to your destination. At which point you might wish you'd bought uh, a rather more conventional, similarly priced combustion Q8 TFSI E plug-in hybrid model, uh, which offers a 34 mile EV range between charges, but which has a petrol engine to back you up behind that. A particularly proactive way of increasing the distance you can travel in a Q8 e-tron between charges is the effective use of its various braking regeneration options, which Audi reckons are the most efficient on the market. Uh, not everyone likes the way that uh, aggressive brake regeneration can virtually bring the car to a stop all on its own, which is why you can turn that feature off or dial it back. The centre screen's efficiency assist section allows you to switch between automatic and manual brake recuperation. And when the whole setup's working to the max, it really does make a big difference, uh, reclaiming spent energy as you cruise, slow or stop. Uh, when the regeneration system's fully active and you take your foot off the accelerator, the electric motors work in reverse. Uh, they become generators of electricity to recharge the battery. In fact, on a hilly road with regeneration set to the max, it's possible to gain as much as 70% of the energy used going up the hill through regenerative braking on the way down. What else? Well, we should mention the integrated heat pump, which harvests heat from both the outside air and the car's electrical components. Uh, the collected heat transforms a special liquid within the heat pump into a gas, and that causes it to rise in temperature. Uh, that warmth is then transferred into the cabin via the heating and ventilation system. Uh, that thereby reduces the power demand from the vehicle's battery on colder days and maximizes driving range. Slippery aerodynamics also play a useful part in overall efficiency. Audi attributes up to six miles of driving range gain to this e-tron Sportback's pretty sleek 0.24 CD drag factor, down from the 0.26 CD figure of the original model. As we said earlier, that falls further to 0.23 CD if you add in the virtual exterior mirrors, uh, a difference which can apparently add up to uh, 3.7 extra miles of range. For comparison, a rival Jaguar I-Pace is rated at 0.29 CD. This Audi's slippery showing has been improved thanks to a number of careful development tweaks with this Q8 e-tron branded model, underbody mounted wheel spoilers for the rear wheels as well as for the front ones in this Sportback model, uh, plus there are also spoilers on the front axle, uh, there's a self-sealing system around the front grille and there are electrically operated shutters which automatically close the radiator when cooling air isn't needed for it. Uh, as before, there is also a smooth underbody area and integrated air curtains behind the front wheels which efficiently channel airflow across the wheels and back along the sides of the car. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, probably that for company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings as they fall into VED base band A and will attract just 2% of benefiting kind company car taxation until 2025. Until then, there'll be no VED road tax to pay and you'll also be exempt from the London congestion charge. As for ownership peace of mind, well, you're limited to the usual unremarkable three-year 60,000 mile Audi warranty. You can extend that to five years at extra cost, but you really shouldn't have to. Uh, the battery is covered by its own eight-year and 100,000 mile warranty. Uh, it's the same as Jaguar offers, but it's slightly inferior to Tesla's deal. Uh, that covers the battery for eight years and unlimited mileage. 
Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. Uh, there's no fuel tank, there's no exhaust system, and obviously there's no internal combustion engine. Uh, you wouldn't think that, though, if you take a look at the service intervals which are needed here. Uh, you can monitor those incidentally in a dedicated section of the central screen. They're every 20,000 miles or every two years. Still, a Jaguar I-Pace is much the same. That needs a garage visit every 21,000 miles. As usual, it would probably be sensible to consider one of Audi's service plans which cover you for virtually everything in advance. Uh, now there are four plans available. Uh, they range from two years and 18,000 miles to four years and 36,000 miles. Insurance ratings will be high, a top of the shop Group 50E, unless you opt for entry level sport trim, which is Group 48E for the 50 e tron and 49E for the 55 e tron uh, Brokers, it seems, don't like electric cars. They're still unreasonably terrified of a major collision battery drivetrain replacement costs. Still, the news is reasonably positive when it comes to residual values, though. According to industry experts, based on 48 months and 40,000 miles of use, these range from 45 to 49% for this sportback variant, uh, which is a few percentage points above the alternative standard SUV body shape. And what about the green issues? Well, Audi's done its best here. This Q8 e-tron, like its predecessor, is built in Brussels at what was one of the industry's first carbon neutral plants. Uh, that's a factory which has been supplied with 100% ecologically generated electricity since 2012. Plus, recycled plastic bottles are used for Dynamica microfiber style upholstery where it's fitted and this model's dashboard trim inlay, all of which isn't enough to satisfy some in the green lobby who get very angry about the whole pure electric car zero emissions ethos. Uh, they reckon that ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity which powers cars of this kind. We'd respond by pointing out that these people usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting the fuel to the pump. Still, if you are one of those enviro-conscious folk, uh, we'll tell you that using a well-to-wheels calculation based on the latest UK electricity generating figures, uh, the burden of filling your batteries in this Q8 Sportback 55 e-tron model uh, will result in a theoretical figure of just over 50 grams per kilometre of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. Uh, that's certainly good. It is, however, some way from being completely green. It's also worth considering the fact that unless battery recycling technology takes a big step forward to match growing EV demand, a lot of automotive EV batteries are going to end up in landfills at the end of their working lives, which is about as far from being green friendly as it's possible to get. Uh, the Volkswagen Group is uh, working hard to try to change that. Uh, they're building a pilot plant at Salzgitter that either gives batteries a second life or uses them as a sort of raw materials after recycling. It is still far more difficult though to recycle an EV battery than it is to recycle a fuel cell from a hydrogen powered vehicle. For us, hydrogen power or synthetic fuel represent far better real world and long term environmental solutions, but for the time being, EVs are what we have. Uh, for all its faults, here though is a very clever one indeed. Q8 e-tron change of name here might lead you to expect more from this Audi than a mid-term update is capable of delivering. Uh, the brand's flagship all-electric SUV still has a weight problem and in its mainstream forms it still doesn't handle as sharply as it should. Uh, the battery update's been welcome but it's a pity that you still have to stretch to this pricier 55 e-tron model to get a really decent operating range. 
There's plenty on the plus side though. Air suspension is a welcome standard fitment, uh, refinement is class leading, and Audi's decision to offer a choice of body shapes remains unique in class, as is the tri-motor drive system of the top SQ8 e-tron model, which creates what in our view is the most underrated high-performance large SUV on the market. As for this sport back body style, well, we could see why you'd choose it in preference to the standard SUV body shape. There aren't many practical compromises and you get a useful dose of extra pavement presence. Ultimately, you still have to really like the Audi brand to really want one of these, but if you appreciate Ingolstadt's cool, understated, considered approach to luxury motoring, then here, a future that's very Vorsprung durch elektrisch beckons. <laughs>